For our short burst today, we're going to have a really close look at how to write some fantastic quotations, making sure that we include all the correct punctuation, making sure that we structure it in a really good way that really sells our product. So here I have the two quotations that are on the PowerPoint slide. You don't need to write these into your book. I just thought it would be really useful for us to refer to them as we're writing, but obviously you can look at them on the PowerPoint slide, so you don't need to do that. Um, what do we notice about these quotations? We've got parenthesis here, who is known by his code number 007 to give us extra detail. We've got a colon introducing our quotation. We've got our inverted commas around our quotation. So we're going to try and follow a very similar structure. This one is the same. We have a name followed by some parenthesis explaining who that person is, this time with commas surrounding it rather than dashes. We then have a colon at the end of the full sentence. It's really important that what comes before the colon is a full sentence. And then we have our quotation in inverted commas. So we're going to try to develop some quotations following that structure precisely. Now, depending how confident you are with this, depends on how closely you follow the structures that are there. I'm going to show you how you can follow those quite closely to make sure that you get it right. But if you're feeling like you can be a bit freer and you want to do things your own way a little bit more, then that's absolutely fine. But see if you can try to get this structure into your writing. So literally, if we take that first quotation there, I'm literally going to take that opening. Listen to what... Now, obviously, this isn't going to be James Bond. I'm going to say David Smith. Nice generic name there. David Smith. Who works for MI5. So now I've got that relative clause got dashes for parenthesis there, could just as easily be commas or brackets, has, oh, that didn't go very well, did it? Has to say, about this, must have, watch colon make sure you've got your inverted commas there now the spy watch 3000 has been revolutionary you think I'll put another rhetorical question in there in here you think the apple watch is clever think again close those inverted commas so that is basically me taking the James Bond quote and following that structure really carefully I could do the same with the Dr Mark Newton quote so um, Let's go for Professor instead of Doctor. Professor Robert Evans, comma, now I'm not going to use a who this time, but I am going to explain who it is. The product developer. from 
the university. I'm not sure that U definitely looks like a capital. The University of, let's say the University of Dorchester, just for fun. Says this is the result of many years of research. Colon. In both instances, notice how that is a full sentence before our colon. It's very, very tempting to say, Professor Robert Evans, the product developer from the University of Dorchester, says colon. But actually, you can't use a colon like that. It has to be a full sentence before. Um, right, inverted commas. This. Now, we need some good hyperbole here. Ground breaking device follows many prototypes get some of that technical language in there as well makes it sound a bit more gadgeting and is decades in the making. Make it, I'm making my reader feel really secure that this is a well-researched, well-developed product. Full stop. The end result. is one of the greatest inventions of modern times. Don't forget to close your inverted commas. Just whilst we're here, I just want to point you in the direction of a couple of the language features that I've used there. I mentioned when I said groundbreaking device about hyperbole, spelt like this, an often wrongly pronounced hyperbole. Hyperbole is that really over the top exaggerated metaphor. So groundbreaking is obviously a metaphor, whatever this device is, it's not going to break the ground but hyperbole is when we go a bit over the top with it and something else that supports that here is this simple word here greatest okay which we call a superlative any of those est words we call superlatives greatest best biggest um, and they could be quite useful in this kind of writing for really selling our item. Now it's your turn to go away and have a go at writing two or three of those quotes that you might be able to use in your own writing.